Welcome back to 3B Homestead. Today we're going to be pulling the motor off the back of our wood stove. And um, some stoves have them, some stoves don't. Today is September the 21st. And even though it's still very hot here in southern Oklahoma, today's high is 98 degrees. It won't be long till it'll be cooling off and um, the nights will be getting pretty cold. So, it's supposed to be in the 80s next week, I think. Right, next week we start cooling off a little bit. And so hopefully it won't be long. One of my favorite things about fall and winter is getting a good stove going, good hot fire going, and you're able to come in when you're nice and cold and back up to that stove. And it's hard to beat a wood stove. This is our primary heat source for our household. And um, the electric motor that we're gonna be taking off, we don't use it a lot, but um, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's two holes right in here. And um, you kick that motor on and it helps push that air throughout the house. And so that helps us run a more efficient fire and we don't have to go through as much firewood on those really, really cold days. Um, it'll help circulate everything. And then this is our fan. Um, I'm sure you've probably seen these before. There's no motor, no electricity to this, but once this stove starts heating up, this fan will start turning and also help push a little bit of um, air on, on into the room and stuff. So no motor on there whatsoever. I really, really like this fan. Um, you know, we've had debates on how much it really helps. I think it helps push some air yeah, through the room. Some people actually have, I don't know if y'all can hear me at all, but some people actually have several on their stoves right. to help push more air out. And so we really like that little fan, but this motor is, is really good to have when we're really cold and we've got to uh, push some air throughout into the house. So it started sounding a little bit funny last year, and so I wanna take it off, see what's going on with it, and either fix it or get it replaced. I've never had to take this motor off so far. Um, I hope that I can take it off the side or the, you know, the bottom or something and not have to move our wood stove, but I just don't know yet. Now what I'm doing here is I've taken this bolt out, and this is a system that we installed. We welded this and built this and installed this that holds fire bricks. And so it holds these fire bricks in here. And this also helps, I believe, run an efficient heat source because it's going to, um, it's going to help hold some of the heat and disperse some of the heat throughout the, uh, as the fire dies down, these still stay a little bit warm. They don't get just super hot. And here's why we installed that. When this, this stove can be cranking and really cooking, and I can still come in here and touch this, it's not hot you know, and, and it's not gonna hurt you. It protects our wall. We've got metal on the bottom with some um, backing that is also fireproof, but up top is this wood. So we have installed these fire brick as an extra safety precaution on the exterior, on the outside of the stove. And um, none of this wood gets hot or anything like that. And it really makes us you know, we, we have a lot more comfort in, you know, leaving the house if we have to or, or leaving a good hot fire going overnight. This is a very good safety measure in my opinion. Um, I'm not an expert, not giving out advice on that. That's just what we've done. And so that's what you're gonna see me taking off these brackets for. So I'm gonna get Brooke to come over and help hold this one so it doesn't move as I take this apart here. And this is super heavy. It's okay. We're gonna switch me. Yeah, just it's gonna lay up against the stove. That way I can. No, you can just lay it down just like that. If it'll lay right there.
What? He likes that. What is it? It's those strips. Ooh. Look at it. Is that what you're yumming about? This is just one of those things to do before you need it to be done. Getting prepared for winter. And with a wood stove being our primary heat source, Brooke and I both love it. I grew up with a wood stove. You did too, didn't you? Mm -hmm. She did too. And um, I wouldn't have it any other way. This front, we'll do a video about our wood stove when we get into winter and start using it and everything. This is uh, had glass in it. And I had to replace the glass. I've also replaced all the gaskets and seals and everything like that. But um, I had to replace the glass on this stove. And instead of going back with glass, I put in metal. Now, I really like how safe it is, but I don't like that you can't watch the fire all the time. But once the fire was going for, you know, a couple weeks or so, we were constantly glass. having to clean the glass yeah. anyway. And That's I feel right. better about it being, you know, completely metal because it, it just seems safer. You me hold something? We put y'all back here so you can see it, but there's not much room to put the tripod and have him so he can move around and stuff. It's kind of close quarters here. And sadly, I do believe we're going to have to pull the stove. Oh. Can you hold the light? Yeah. Wow. What's well, close quarters? That's the switch. Did you unplug it? Yeah, it's unplugged. Any way you can shine the light over here? I'm not good with the flashlight as y'all can tell. <clears throat> Crescent ranch back there. No. Are they both this, supposed to be the same time? If y'all are wondering where Cowboy's at, he's over there eating his snacks. He just woke up from his nap, so it's snack time. While he's whittling away at this, <laughs> uh, those of y'all that are in the colder weather and the temperatures and stuff that have already dropped, how cold is it where y'all are? Um, has it already dropped, you know, below 60s and gotten to the colder weather where if you do have a wood stove or do you already have that cranking and stuff? It won't be long, we'll have to start cutting wood and stuff again. Hand me one of those screws. Can you hold this bracket? Yeah, do you need one of these two or no? I need you to hold the bracket. Okay. Go get a smaller screwdriver. Right, I'll use that bigger one. This one? No. 
No, the screwdriver to take off your side of the bracket. This one? Yep. Should be able to do it by hand before it drops. <laughs> Hold a little bit. Yep. Okay. Hold the bracket. Yeah. <laughs> Did you drop your toy? No, I didn't. Man. Yeah, just hold it. <laughs> I could hold the motor easier than I could hold the flashlight if you want me to. Nope, that's too hard. You had it with that little one. Okay, we successfully removed the motor. Yeah, yeah, in a minute. They're probably all the same size. So we got the motor taken off and now we got to figure out what's wrong with it. So this will be part one of this project and we're either going to get that motor fixed or get us a new motor. So anyways, we'll see what well, happens. We, we've got a guy that we can take it to. Yep. Or yep. It or we know a guy that works on motors if we can't get it fixed. So we'll see if we can get her running first and if not, we'll get him hold of it. And, and if we got to replace it, we'll go ahead and replace it and put us a new motor on because this. But that's why we're starting in September because we've got to have it. In case we need a new motor, we got time to get one in and get it installed. And um, because this wood stove ain't going nowhere. So, anyways, all right, got that part of the project done. Now we got to clean up our tools here. So, all right, so I'm going to gather all my pieces up here and keep them out of reach of our little boy and so this will be just kind of a part one i guess this project we'll see what happens with the motor we'll keep you all updated on that and um you know we have a decent supply of firewood already that has been seasoned and dry but we always try to cut more in the fall and that way we have it for next year we probably got enough wood um for this year at our house um we've probably got to cut some more for dad's house but and we work together and you know we uh get a lot done and so anyways we're going to um probably come back and do a video you know of our stove what we like about it what we would change about it what we've improvised i mean what we've updated on it things like that um and we'll probably do that when we actually start using it bring you in when we're actually running a fire and stuff we're looking very forward to fall and cooler weather and things like that um but there's a lot of things that you have to think about ahead of time and prepare for um you know when you're doing things like this Number one, the wood, you need a good wood supply. 
and things like this motor it's not a must but it's nice to have um, another thing this motor will do is is you see our thermometer here if you get a fire that's running too hot you can shut the vents up turn that motor on and that thing will cool off so so fast and so it's very important to us to, to have that motor running as long as we have electricity it helps us out to keep an efficient heating source and so anyways I'll put these fire bricks back in once we get the motor in but what I think I'm gonna do is set it straight and re-bolt it um, the reason I unbolted it is because they're super heavy for me and Brooke to move um, you know so I unbolted it but I'm probably gonna go ahead and bolt it back together while it's sitting right here up forward and that way um, it doesn't get pushed over or toppled over or anything like that and so we actually might could have moved it together but if you'll come hold this one, I'll scoot it in. Anyways, that's what we're going to do. We appreciate you watching this video. Come back and see us. God bless. Thanks for watching. Just love you.